Hello chess friends and welcome to Azad of Chess Channel and welcome to a new chess strategy and tactics video. So in this video we'll discuss the middle game stage again. Today we'll talk about the possibility of creating a pass pawn in the middle game stage. Creating pass pawns in my opinion is very very important because when you create a pass pawn I think it becomes really the focus of the game. Uh, basically your opponent is always uh, stuck to the defense of the potential promotion. He's always annoyed by, by the possibility that you make further progress with your pawn. So that's why I think when you you create a dangerous pass pawn uh, your opponent is really forced to react he cannot act and that makes of course your game a little bit easier because you're not so worried about uh, tactical possibilities on of your on your side of the board you're not threatening so much on your side so that's why uh, creating pass pawn is I think one of the most important strategic elements and then of course when you maybe promote a pawn to queen then you have also great winning chances so uh, I've sorted out a really great example that shows the power of creating a pass pawn and this example is really great because it's not so obvious how to create even one because black in my opinion has here solid position it's a beautiful gameplay by Karen Grigorian against Viktor uh, Kuprejcik in this particular position uh, Karen Grigorian played incredible move and uh, maybe you can pause the video and try to see now also the best continuation here for white it's a tough one I'm not saying it's easy to see it but if you watch now the pawn structure here I think you can get uh, the next best move here for white because um, when we also talk about disadvantages uh, in the position for both sides notice that black is now backward pawn on b7 and has now also the weak pawn on a6 uh, and also on b7 and has also a weakness when it comes to squares here on b6 the b6 is a vulnerable square maybe also the square a5 on the other hand a white has i think a huge huge problem with the backward pawn on d4 so when you watch now our problems here from white perspective i think you could guess the next best move uh for white it's really tough one crowd and gregor and my plane in my opinion played really one of the best strategic moves of all time so pause the video as i said and try to see now the best strategic idea uh here for white okay here as I said, it's a tough one. It's really one of the strangest trades of pieces uh, that I've seen in my life. Bishop to f3, even allowing your opponent to mess up your pawn structure in front of the king. But when you think about it harder, um, this move really makes sense because it meets with the idea how to play with backward pawns. When we have a backward pawn, our main strategic and maybe even tactical goal is to get uh, this pawn advance. We want to get the pawn to d5. We don't tolerate, of course, weaknesses in, in our position. So that's why we want to play this move d5. But the bishop is standing in the way. And um, of course, this move bishop takes f3 creates uh, structural weaknesses in your position. But I think black cannot easily attack your king black doesn't have good attacking resources in order to uh, play tactic uh, tactically against your king okay you have several weaknesses here on life course but now the d5 goal uh, is really happening for sure d5 will happen in the next couple of moves because notice black cannot play the move e6 e6 is not possible because you lose the queen the bishop is uh, very very good here on h4 so you see this move Bishop to f3 by Karen Grigorian uh, caused, I think, already, already huge strategic problems in Black's camp. Uh, I'm not saying this is winning immediately. The engine also uh, loves here Black's position. I'm not saying this is a bad position uh, here for Black at all. But in order to create anything out of this position, you have to get rid of the key defender of the square d5 that's not allowing us to push the pawn on d5 that creates still this blockade against our backward pawn on d4. So that's why bishop to have through the perfect, really strategic move, uh, which creates now really an unbalanced game, a crazy, crazy game that allows now also a why to make fur further progress with the move d5 in order to block now this position uh, on Grigorian's opponent uh, here Kuprecik played move queen to d5 uh, simply created a block it as you're supposed to do um, uh, here against the potential backward pawn but now of course your bishop to e7 and after queen to f3 okay black took the pawn on f3 black took 
uh, a very important defender of White's king. But how is Black going to include more pieces into the attack? I'm not seeing good ways here how Black should make any progress here. You cannot include rooks, you cannot include bishops into the game. Um, um, you're basically, again, um, battling against the potential d5 breaks. Right now, after move queen to f3, uh, here we have queen to g5. Uh, by Karen Grigorian not allowing to get checked uh, here on g4 and now the d5 goal is happening for sure for instance uh, if you play something like here rook from a to c8 then we can play I think here even me immediately the move queen to g2 and after queen to g2 king to g2 now again d5 is rolling this pawn is protected and then d6 d7 and suddenly this would be I think a beautiful beautiful winning endgame uh, here for for white so that's why after move queen to g5 here queen to a3 was played uh here kuprechik also tried to do something with the potential passer on on the a file but it's simply too slow now d5 is rolling and this was the beauty of the game okay black had his fun a little bit here in front of white king but as i said he never could include more pieces into the game. Now, after move queen to a4, d6, the pawn is rolling here. Uh, Kuprechik tried to again play on the blockade, not allowing this pawn to advance on d7. And now, again, stop the video for a little bit to try to see now the best continuations here for white. I'm not saying, again, these are clear uh, winning ideas, but uh, I th really wanted to play on a potential principle uh, here for white. White has to now, of course, include more pieces into the attack. So that's why, how would you make further progress here? What would you do now in this position uh, with the white pieces? Okay, I think we have so far solved many positional problems here in front of the king. So no checks are possible. Here, okay, white has a certain blockade, uh, pardon me, black has a blockade here on d7, but it's never, really never good to create a blockade with the queen. If there would be maybe a rook on d7 and the queen, black's queen, could play maybe more freely in the game, then we can talk about a good position for black. But now the queen is a little bit stuck here just to, de uh, to defend a single square on the board. This is, of course, not the optimal position of the queen. So that's why here uh, Grigorian took uh, the advantage here and he included now the rook into the game. Now this other rook can also come into the game. So uh, the rooks are creating now already, already great tactical damage in black's position. So black is stucking on his goal here with the move a5 but it's not working look at this rook to f3 is coming queen to 6 6 rook to e3 a4 and now uh, rook to d3 again threatening the move d7 and now black has to play again on a blockade on uh, d7 with the queen so you see the queen is simply paralyzed uh, to the defense of one single square and now pause the video and try to see now again the best continuation uh, here for white from this point on it's a game over here for for black uh, so it's a tactical solution now of this problem it's not a strategic solution the move bishop to f3 in the beginning after trades of bishops on f3 was i think a strategic idea a strategic goal now we have a tactical solution now we have immediately possibilities to create really, really monstrous damage here in black's position so as i said pause the video and try to see now the best move here for white <coughs> Okay, here Grigorian played the amazing rook takes f7. This was the way to go. Because if you play king to f7, then it's really, really hard to defend this rook. This queen to d5, queen to e6, now rook to f3. Uh, if, of course, king to g8 happens, we'll simply pick up the queen. If you cover yourself with the bishop, then rook takes f6. Again, you cannot take uh, here with the queen because of the pin. You have to step back and now we pick up the queen and again this would be game over here for black. Really, really wild stuff. So after rook to f7, uh, black is desperate now uh, to do anything here to make some kind of a threat now after move a3 we have queen to d5 of course threatening some dangerous checks the king drops back on h8 and now uh here grigoran played the move bishop to f6 attack the queen and also uh here uh, uh attacks also the bishop on g7 so in the game if you try maybe a2 this is not working because bishop to f6 and now a rook to d7 is winning the game immediately for, for white so that's why after move bishop to f6 we have queen to g4 by kuprechik we have a rook to g3 covering everything and now after queen to e6 uh here bishop to g7 king to g8 and now again just for fun maybe you can solve now this mini puzzle try to see now again 
the best continuation here for um, uh, for white it, and after this move of black immediately resigned okay here you can really do many things but uh, one of the great solutions was this move rook to f8 if you play for instance here a uh, rook to f8 then queen to e6 is winning the game if you for instance play king to g7 then queen to e6 uh, rook takes e6 and now we pick up this one and again the game would be over you can do anything but uh, this is one way to win the game and as i said after move rook to f8 in this position uh here kuprecik resigned so great game i think great example how to let the pawns roll uh, we should really understand um, our strategic disadvantages in this position. Let's go back uh, here after move um, bishop to f3. Notice we got the rid of the key defender of the d5 score because we have this strategic disadvantage. We have this annoying backward pawn on d5 and it seems so that black has a great position here. But when the d5 pawn is coming, then I think there's this is really tough to defend. Although black doesn't have to play necessarily a game like this, but I really wanted to show you the power of this idea uh, created by Grigorian, in my opinion, one of the uh, most beautiful strategic ideas that I've seen in my life. So, okay, I hope that you enjoyed the studies. Interesting, interesting ideas uh, here for sure in the middle game stage. If you want to know more about middle game strategies, end game strategies, and opening principles, check out our basics in chess series and also our become a master in chess series uh, here in my YouTube chess channel. Here are the links of our playlist. And if you like this content, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you soon with some more videos and what to say. Chess is the best, of course.